Hello and welcome to Plan Astronaut. Today we're going to be doing an overview of the Canadian Space Agency's astronaut application. Now for those of you wondering, I'm going to be applying for the Canadian Space Agency's astronaut recruitment and I feel like I have met all of the qualifications and criteria for the application. That being said, back in 2008, when the last Canadian Space Agency recruitment was on, I did not yet have my undergraduate degree, but I used the application as a template to build a plan for the next eight years of my life, which gets us to today. So if you find yourself in similar shoes that you want to become an astronaut, but you're a middle, high school, or undergraduate student, I encourage you to go ahead and have a look at the astronaut application anyway, because it's going to help you make choices about the next 15, 20 years of your life that will improve the odds of you becoming an astronaut as well. So to get started with the overview, I'm just going to go ahead and read the Canadian Space Agency's intent of the process. It goes like this. The Canadian Space Agency is looking for people who want to be a part of the next generation of space explorers. Two individuals will be selected as new members of the Canadian Astronaut Corps. The CSA is recruiting exceptional people with excellent health, a university education in science, engineering, or medicine, and extensive knowledge and experience. So those three categories are going to be um, the selection criteria that the Canadian Space Agency uses to select candidates. Now, in order to apply, it's actually relatively simple, and I'm going to walk you through the process here. The information that you need to pr provide to the Canadian Space Agency is essentially three things in two bullet points. So the first of those two is that you'll need to provide your resume. Okay? A resume is a list of achievements and accomplishments that you give to someone when you're doing a job application. So this is pretty standard stuff. Now one thing to note about the resume is that the Canadian Space Agency hasn't said how long or short your resume needs to be. So if you have an extensive list of experiences, I, I think and I understand that it should be okay for you to go as many pages as you need. The typical length of a resume is only two pages. But that being said, my own resume is uh, something on the order of five pages, and I'm going to submit the whole thing. The second thing that you need to submit is a covering letter with a maximum of 1,000 words. And what they're looking for with a covering letter, I'm just going to read out to you. Please explain what motivates you to become an astronaut, and also tell us which elements make you a prime candidate who will contribute to the advancement of the Canadian Space Program. So this covering letter is essentially an essay format that allows you to be creative about telling the story of why you want to be an astronaut and what you've done in, in the past in order to become one. Now the third thing they're looking for is a little more ambiguous and they've essentially just said it as this, you must meet all essential qualifications in order to be appointed to the position. All right? And what they go on to describe is how you can show them what those qualifications are. They do say here, it is your responsibility to provide appropriate examples that illustrate how you meet each qualification. Failing to do so could result in your application being rejected. So what I've assumed this means is that within your resume and covering letter, you need to describe to the Canadian Space Agency why you meet all of the qualifications that they're asking for in this document. So let's go over the qualifications next. They're also relatively straightforward and there are three major categories. Category one is education. And what they're looking for here is an advanced degree in science, engineering, or a medical doctorate in medicine or dentistry. Now they do have a huge list of the different fields that qualify in a Bachelor of Science or a Bachelor's of Education. Um, so you can go ahead, if you haven't yet uh, begun your undergraduate, look at this list, see what interests you, and try and build your undergraduate courseware around one of these programs. Um, if you are already an undergraduate, you can always look at this list and make sure that what you're working towards qualifies as one of the essential um, fields on the application. So that's education. The second thing they're looking for as far as qualifications is experience. So even if you have a bachelor's degree or you're a medical doctor, you don't necessarily automatically 
um, qualify, they're looking for three years of, ex of professional experience. So this means when you've completed your degree, you go out, you start working in your field, and you need to have worked in that field for three years. But there are a couple of shortcuts. The first is getting a master's, which allows you to apply one year towards your professional experience. So if you have a bachelor's degree and a master's degree, you only require two years of professional experience in order to qualify. If you have a bachelor's degree and a doctorate or PhD, that allows you to contribute three years to the professional experience requirements, which means that as someone with a doctorate, you wouldn't need to have any additional professional experience, but obviously it would help. And finally, the other catch here is that if you are a doctor, you don't need to have three years of professional experience if you're licensed to practice within Canada. So if you've just completed your schooling as a doctor and you've gone and started working and you're a licensed practitioner, you already qualify towards that professional experience. Okay? And finally, the last qualification, the third major qualification, is a physical and medical requirement. And unfortunately, this means that some people are not going to qualify based on their body type, their height, their weight, and their vision. So this is what the Canadian Space Agency is looking for in these candidates. First, you need to be uh, taller than 149.5 centimeters and you need to be shorter than 190.5 centimeters. So just to give you an idea, I'm on a good day as tall as 180 centimeters, so I still am about 10 centimeters shorter than the maximum requirement. As far as weight is concerned, you need to be heavier than 55 kilograms and lighter than 95 kilograms. So this is obviously to do with the specifications of the launch vehicles. Um, it looks like anybody lighter than 50 kilograms wouldn't qualify, and I'm not sure exactly why. Uh, the third thing is that you need to be physically fit and in excellent health. Uh, so, you know, that is something that a doctor will decide. Uh, again, I encourage you to apply regardless of having any of these qualifications. Your blood pressure may not be higher than 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury in a sitting position. Your vision must be 20-20, but here it's important to note that if you wear glasses or contact lenses or you've had laser eye surgery, you still qualify as long as your vision is correctable to 2020. So while you're wearing glasses, if you're in the doctor's office and they test your vision, if you can see with 2020 acuity, you'll be okay in this application. Now, sadly, if you're colorblind, you, you do not qualify for um, this application. And that's something that I find um, obvious in, in the context of space exploration, but extremely disappointing for those of you that do have colorblindness. That might change in the future. All of these might change as we progress um, to more and more people in space. And finally, you need to have normal hearing. So if you have uh, chronic auditory conditions like persistent tinnitus or deafness, um, you also don't qualify. So that is the three major categories, education, experience, and physical and medical requirements. So what I recommend, if you've been following along this whole way, in the next week I'm going to be working on writing and rewriting my resume, and I'm also going to be working on writing and rewriting my covering letter. I encourage you to do the same, right? Have a look at the application online and see what things you qualify for and which ones you don't so that you can be informed about making decisions for the next five or 10 years in your life. That being said, thanks so much for watching today and I look forward to sharing more with you as I fill out the application.